Today's video is about a desert mantis species called Aremia phyla. Let's put the tank together. Here we are, and there's a little bug flying around. I'm trying to make a video here of a little bug. This is the finished tank. We'll drop our mantis into it in a few moments. You may recognize this tank from, I think, two weeks ago when I made a video about the new Troglodaris beetles, desert beetles. Well, I left the sand in there. I left that piece of choya wood in there, as well as that sort of gnarly looking one in the corner. Put it upright. Got a piece of what I think is rose quartz there. Another little rock I found along the way somewhere. And then some pebbles up here on top. This will make a nice backdrop for our arid loving desert mantis species. Let's pop the mantis in the tank and get to the bug parts. So I added a few things in. Got that barite desert rose back there in the corner. A couple things from my rock collection, sort of inherited. Neat polished stone down there. And then I think this is called a gypsum rose. So now it's time to add in one of the desert mantises. And of course, they don't do terribly well communally, rather ferocious predators. And we'll just leave it in there, allow it to acclimate to its new home. So I put a roach back in there in the corner and the mantis is rather immediately showing some interest in it. They seem to have really amazing vision. They remind me a little bit of, that was interesting how it sort of stood itself up almost to get a better look at the roach, which has slipped now behind the rock. Back this off a little bit and wait for the roach to make another pass around the cage. Well, that's close by. And there you go. Lunchtime for a desert mantis. So when we see most mantises feeding, they're usually hanging from something. And if that roach, for example, were to be crawling on a branch or a twig or the lid of the container in most mantises containers, you would see that the mantis would often pull it off whatever surface it's holding on to because that roach, it can hold on to that surface with six legs and whenever it can get a grip on something, it can potentially pull itself out of the mantis clutches. Now, what's interesting about this species here is that it has erected itself. It's sort of standing upright, completely in the reverse from a mantis that is normally hanging. And the roach, it can't get any traction on the ground because the mantis is holding it up high off the ground. 
the size of the head on this species, it's really tearing through that roach very quickly. A little difficult for some people to watch, but this is what they do. They are predators and they prefer living food like this. You saw the predator response as the roach came near it. So I'm going to let this one finish its meal and then I'm going to drop a few other mantises in there so we can watch some more feeding responses. It's always very interesting to see how they do it and how it's different than the way other mantises hunt. If any of you didn't see it, Jesse from Shapes in Nature and I, we interviewed Low Heat over on the Shapes in Nature YouTube channel. Check that out. He talks a little bit about his interests in the spination or spination of the forelegs of mantises. Well, I put the roach in near this one and before I even had a chance to turn the camera on, it's already doing sort of a headstand and going after its prey. This roach is a little larger than what the mantis could comfortably handle, I guess. Pretty good look here at the eyes of this mantis. You see how huge their eyes are? Their heads in general are enormous. Very ant-like. They are a desert species. They are ground mantises, and they do like very warm temperatures. You're gonna to wanna to keep them north of 85 degrees for sure. Even hotter than that is better if you can make it happen. One of the interesting things about these mantises is that they molt on the ground. They don't hang from something like other mantises do. They don't use gravity as an aid during the molting process. They're going to molt on the ground like a roach does, really. If I can find it, I do have some video of the egg cases of this species and maybe some first instar nymphs. This one here is a subadult. They do get wings at maturity and they have a really awesome startle display where they splay their wings out to the sides and there are some colors and of course that's meant to intimidate predators by making them look bigger. So I've come to the conclusion that these desert mantises don't love the fine sand in this tank and so I'm going to add in some more rocks here. This is often how it goes. I don't typically set tanks up for many of the unusual things that I get in here through my business briefly. And so I sort of learn as I go. Often there aren't really good care sheets out there for some of these newer to the hobby species like this. And so a desert mantis or a desert creature of any kind might occupy a microhabitat, one that's sandier or one that's more rocky. And through watching this mantis move in this fine sand, I have come to the conclusion, and it's still just a theory, but that it would prefer a rockier habitat where it could get its footing a little bit better. And so I'm adding in a lot more pebbles here to provide it with what I think might be a preferable habitat. And we'll see how this affects the mantis behaviorally here in a moment. So all these rocks 
and I would say our mantis is a lot more cryptic looking in this revised habitat. Pretty fast moving. You can see that its footing is much improved here in the new tank <laughs> to the point where it's actually kind of hard to track it back here. So another conclusion I've come to, <laughs> that mantis is going nuts back there, is that the prey I was offering to the mantis was too large. And so I have some smaller roaches in here now that I'm going to drop into the cage. And we'll take a look to see how the mantis reacts to them. And uh, totally missed the shot there. There it is right down there, eating the first roach. Wouldn't be the first time that I saw roaches trying to get in on the feeding. Dispatch their own kind. It's a vicious world. The mantis is holding the roach, and now it's eating roach right out of the mouth of the mantis. This isn't something that you see every day, and I think we know how this all ends. Mantis is trying to get away from it all. And in a tank that's newly set up like this, there's nothing organic at all for the roaches to be attracted to, except for the smell of, well, these roaches are just lining up for it. So it dropped the prey that it was feeding on previously. We'll see if it picks it back up or if it grabs another roach. It didn't finish its meal. And so I'm pretty sure it's going to be going for another roach here shortly. There, nailed it. Roach was putting up a little bit of a fight there, but the mantis has it now. So I'm going to drop an ant in with this mantis. Apparently in nature, Aremia phyla browerii, this species here, is an ant feeder. I only have a queen ant. Wasn't able to find any other kind of ants outside. And there you have it. Well, it's not over until it's over, but it does appear that the mantis is going to wrap this one up. <laughs>